so thank you, Mary. And for those that don't know, know me, I'm a regular attender here at the MOOC, and I think it's important um, to point out, those of you that have a golden eye, that uh, throughout the sessions uh, over the last few days, and indeed every MOOC, we set a challenge to one another. A couple of us set a challenge. And so this year, or last year, it was ABBA lyrics. This year, it's the James Bond team. So anytime we mention a James Bond movie, um, it counts as one score. And of course, that's why I ended up giving um, Becky a high five during the panel discussions. We weren't very immature, but that's neither here nor there. She, she did nail it. She is absolutely the legend, right, <laughs> of, of, of doing those sort of things. But I'll give it a good stab anyway. <clears throat> so somebody needs to count James Bond references. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let's just see what we've got. Re rethinking our approach to plagiarism. So I work for DCU, and along with a colleague of mine, Shadi Karazi, we evaluated how we manage plagiarism. Not just technically how we manage it, but how pedagogically we manage plagiarism. And um, the reason why we did it uh, was the unsatisfactory uh, setup that we had technically. So it was the technology that drove us to it. And what I want to do over the next few slides is actually explain to you our approach uh, and, and, and where we're modifying it to, or the direction we're modifying it to. It was very appropriate, and I'm sure Gavin did this on purpose, but a lot of the, the issues that um, uh, Roger brought up there with Insolvent, we had as well. Uh, and, and you may see some, some uh, uh, similar challenges that we had, but maybe a, a similar solution as well. I never know. So, a bit of background. So um, we have 16,000 students spread over uh, three different campuses, and we are trying to move everybody towards the uh, electronic submission. We're, we have, like every institution, we have the issues where some staff are more competent with technology than others, and uh, some think Moodle is the devil. So we're, we're, we're kind of in that, that zone where everybody else is as well. But a big thing for us, as is for you, with the, with the internet and with uh, the, the advances in technology, plagiarism is becoming so much easier for students. So we needed to have some form of text matching service uh, at our disposal, but we didn't want to go at a, in a half-hearted attempt. Um, <clears throat> so we looked at the text matching service that we have, and I'll go through the criteria um, that we actually evaluated on. I'd be delighted to share the results with you. These uh, slides are actually being uh, presented. They're not just for your eyes only. They are up on LinkedIn. So that's, that's two now, and I won't make a specter of myself anymore. Um, <coughs> but here we go. What were we trying to achieve? We were trying to get more electronic submissions. We were trying to get more consistency, because very similar to um, some of the work that Jess was doing in, uh, and with the feedback, we wanted to be able to use the data to our advantage but of course, if the data is not in there in the first place, if they don't use electronic submissions, if they don't use electronic grading, we can't get that data. So what we were trying to achieve was to make sure we got more people moving towards electronic submissions, but also that at the same time, they weren't being driven by the technology. That at the, we wanted to make sure we were educating our students on plagiarism. We weren't there to beat them across the head with a stick, although sometimes that was tempting. Um, but what we're trying to do, as I say, is move towards electronic submissions. So <coughs> I wanted to look at what we were currently getting. So as I was saying, we have 16,000 students in, in our institution. And um, if you don't already use it, if you are a customer of Turnitin, I would highly recommend looking at the statistics by, by, uh, behind the system. They're very, very comprehensive. But we had... Uh, Small increase, now I will say for 2017, that was up until Christmas, so it's only half the year. But the, the increases were going in the right direction in terms of number of submissions. However, they're still very, very low, in my opinion, considering we have several, um, several thousand modules on our system, and you're gonna have several assessments in each uh, module. The other uh, bit to, to bring across to, to your attention is Grademark. We didn't have that many people using Grademark, and the Grademark studio in, in uh, sorry, the feedback studio in Turnitin is actually very good, and as, as Roger was testifying to there earlier on, there's some really good advantages to using it. However, we weren't, we weren't getting the buy-in from our staff. We were getting our tech-savvy staff absolutely no bother, and they loved it, and the audio feedback as well. They absolutely loved that side of things. 
but the numbers were very low. And we came to a decision saying, right, do, well, do we go in at hell for leather for, uh, for Turnitin and just push everything through Turnitin or not? Do we rethink our approach? And that's when we came across uh, Orkin. So Orkin uh, is another text matching service and we decided to, to compare and contrast the two of those and see where we go. Look at the advantages of each one of them and compare them. So what we did was we compared them with cost, with functionality, matching ability, turnaround time, and this is an important feature which I want to uh, spend a, a little bit of detail on, and support. And that's the support we get from them, but also the support we have to give to our students and to our staff, because they're the things that, that were, well, <coughs> it was just a, it was a fundamental for us to, to uh, reduce the level of contact time that we have. And we developed, as part of the assignment tool to, to, to move towards electronic submissions, we developed the Moodle tours. And we've put, made the tours for each one of the um, assignment functionalities, each one of the assignment pages. But we still had, uh, I couldn't do that with Turnitin because it's an external tool. I couldn't, um, when, when we're pushing people out to an external system, they would complain, oh, well, I need to learn how to use another piece of software. Can, can Moodle not do it for us? So there, I'm going to go through them, not in, in any particular order, but I do want to start with support. So both systems produced a, a um, <coughs> similarity score, which is great. And in uh, Turnitin, we had, as I said, uh, 23,000 reports generated from it. But with those 23,000 uh, reports, we had 52 tickets. So that was a ticket ranging from, where's my Turnitin score? It hasn't turned up yet. Um, to how do I use it, to the PDF isn't uploaded, to whatever the case may be, a whole load of standard issues, not, not, nothing exceptional, but 52 queries we had, um, and 52 queries we had to address. At the same time, we piloted Orkin and um, uh, uh, Turnitin at the same time, we ran on the same Moodle instance, and because Orkin is integrated into the Moodle assignment, <coughs> we had 55,000 submissions. So every single submission that went through uh, Moodle directly, 55,000, and we had four tickets. And three of those tickets were, what is Urkin, right? Um, so we realized there was an issue, but th what we were able to do is because, because um, we were driving it through Moodle, the lecturers didn't even know that they were doing text matching. They didn't even know that, uh, oh, I need to do a turn it in thing. And turn it in, in fairness to them, they are the, the hoover to vacuums. Everybody just calls the, the plagiarism stuff, turn it in. So we, uh, we didn't want to upset lecturers by saying that they they're, they're, uh, have to learn a new tool. We just embedded it in secretly. By default, we set it in every single submission goes through. And as I said, we had four tickets with 55,000 submissions. So what we had to do then is look at, um, that's, a, that's a plus on our side, as you, as you can appreciate. The turnaround time was a big issue because in those support tickets that I mentioned, we had, and we used a Turnitin standalone plugin, um, and we put everything into Moodle, as I say, because we didn't want to drive our lectures outside to another technology. But we um, used a, the, the uh, plugin, and we were getting inconsistent turnaround times because I could submit an assignment on a Friday, and it would spit back the, turnaround, the, the similarity report in an hour. And then, if I submit it on the Monday or submit it on the Tuesday, it will take three or four days to do. And I understand the reason why that happens. Obviously, size of the essay and, and all those sort of great stuff. And I was on to turn it in. And in fairness to Jamie, I'm not sure if Jamie's here, but the level of, of uh, assistance I was getting from Jamie was very, very good. But the difficulty was that the plugin wasn't actually communicating with Moodle properly. So the score was actually turning up on Turnitin if you went to turnitin.com, but it wasn't being passed back to Moodle. So um, I then was forced to tell my uh, lecturers, oh, well, you need to log in to, uh, to this external system. So then their, their attitude towards Moodle was, oh, well, there's something wrong with Moodle. Whereas it wasn't that, and I didn't want to turn that around. So it was definitely plug-in related, and it was, it was we identified that the plug-in issue needs to be fixed, and, but we couldn't rely on that. We couldn't, we were losing control, again, very similar to yourself. We wanted to bring all of our issues under our own control. Um, so that was a, a negative, let's just say. Um, <coughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm not here to promote Orkin specifically, but you can talk to James about what his turnaround times are. Um, <coughs> but because of the turnaround times, 
what was happening was a lecturer couldn't actually correct the assignment until they could actually see it. Um, where the turn in, whereas because it's built into Moodle, they could see the assignment, correct it, and then wait for the plagiarism score if there was any delay on it. But the other uh, challenge that we had, and it's well documented, and again, I would be uh, complimenting um, Turnitin on this, is they have a huge customer base. So they have a huge database records to check against. Um, so we were immediately putting ourselves in our eyes, without doing the research, but in our eyes, putting ourselves at a disadvantage. Because if we move away from Turnitin, we move away from all of those submissions. So what we did was we, we got into the figures. Uh, these are the, the, the uh, matching abilities or similarity scores in Turnitin. And we actually realized that most of our results, as you will see there, most of our um, plagiarism uh, reports were uh, less than 25%. So they weren't like major plagiarism cases. And if you were getting something that was maybe a 5% difference between one system and the next, it's not major. It's 15% or it's 10%. Whereas if it was a difference between 67% uh, and 24%, that's when it becomes an issue. And I'm not saying that isn't the case or doesn't actually happen, but the majority of our percentages, uh, or the majority of our plagiarism in the first case, are actually quite low. Um, and that's when we're using the, the, the more comprehensive database of, of uh, Turnitin. So, yes, it was an issue, and actually, uh, we'll see there that 90% of the documents that we analyzed, and actually, just to, to explain the analysis, um, we put in 60 documents into both systems. And there, there was a difference, and you can read there from the screen, but it wasn't a major difference. It wasn't a turning point for us. Um, <clears throat> And the difference is down to the, uh, the, the way the systems work, the, 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 uh, how they, what they count as, as a match, how the algorithms work behind the scenes. And I'm not a techie person, so I, I, I can't even pretend to explain that to you. But it manifested itself in it's not an issue for us. So then functionality. And I do appreciate this is a bit small um, for the people at the back of the screen. But what we did was we looked at all of the different features that we were concerned about um, as an institution for our assessment uh, processes. And we looked at uh, Moodle and the plugin Urkin, and we looked at Turnitin. Now, we had built two plugins, uh, specific reports to us for marking guides, and what, uh, marking guides and reports for advanced grading that allows us analyze the feedback that we give to our students, um, analyze and break it down on a criteria basis. So, because this was incredibly valuable to us and incredibly valuable to our external examiners. So we needed to have that in, and that was there because we used uh, the loop, or sorry, loop is, is our local name for Moodle, excuse me, because we used Moodle for our electronic submissions. We could still keep that criteria. Um, <coughs> group work is an issue, again, as, as you alluded to. Uh, individual extensions are an issue, but we could take advantage of all the excellent work that's done and available through standard Moodle. And now with the advances that's been done in the grade book, notwithstanding the, the, the problems that um, Roger alluded to, but the, the advantages with the annotated feedback, that like, really pushes everything more towards the favor of, of Moodle. The big thing we had was audio feedback. Because audio feedback to students, uh, for, from a lecturer's point of view, absolutely brilliant. I, I, like the literature will tell you how good audio feedback is versus written, but because it's so easy and because Feedback Studio allows you to do it so easy, this was an issue for us. So, but if I come back to the number of people that are actually using Grademark, if I come back to the number of people that are actually using Grademark, I was only affecting a small number of lectures. So I had to come up with some sweet way of getting around those small number. But could I justify not having everything true in electronic submission just to satisfy what was 8% of our staff, 8% of our users, not even 8% of our staff? And the answer was no. <coughs> so I looked at the cost. And the cost that we had, the cost was the last thing that we looked at. And we started off on a trial license for 15,000 euros, but then went up to the full price um, for Turnitin. And, and I do accept that Turnitin has the feedback studio. It's not just a plagiarism, and Urkin is just a plagiarism. But Moodle has become so much better, those advantages are, are dropped down. But there's your difference. 9,000 versus 25,000. So what I did to address that 
is we're now in the course of making a plugin to make audio feedback available for us. And we looked at the other plugins, and actually, uh, one of which, there was a guy here yesterday, where's Justin Hunt, is he here? Can't see, he is. But uh, the Poodle, I think is how you pronounce it, Poodle, Poodle, and that looks absolutely superb. So we're thinking, well, there's a plugin already available, so we could get, a, get away with that or, or, or still modify it. But we went a little step further. <coughs> and we looked at the Atto editor, editor that we have. And we decided what we're going to do, it's, uh, we haven't done it yet, but it will be done over the summer. And we're just going to insert an audio button in there. Because for those of you that don't know, with the uh, Moodle 3.3, that we have much stronger integration with Google Apps and, and Microsoft Office, or Google Suite, it's now called. So what happens now is when you record the audio, it goes straight into the Google Drive. So you don't have to worry about sharing permissions. You don't have to worry about privacy. Uh, it becomes for your eyes only. There's another one, right? Um, <coughs> and uh, what I will say is, is that when you roll over your Moodle every time, the audio is, is kept there because it's a link to the file that's stored in the Google Drive. So it, it, it becomes a win-win for us. So instead of um, it being a disadvantage, and that to develop that plugin cost me less than the annual charge that I'm paying for Orkin. So I still have a chunk of change left, right? So <coughs> what we want to do, we terminated it, uh, turn it in in, in uh, June 2017. Our task now is to move more people by making this stuff easy. And, and for those of you that, that uh, have the eagle eye, you'll, or you'll be thinking, well, this is everywhere where we have the editor. So now not only are we rechanging the way we manage plagiarism, we're rechanging the way we manage assessment because a student could click that to submit an assessment, submit an audio assessment. Not only could the lecturer do audio feedback, students can do audio assessments. And when it comes to feedback, you can actually have that conversation because in the editor um, text box, wherever that is, student can put in a comment and the lecturer puts in a comment. So what I will say to you is, I will, I will definitely do a project like this again in terms of we took it on, it was a mammoth challenge. We are only at the start. I'll never say never again about taking on such a big challenge. <coughs> How many am I on? How many am I on? I've lost it, right? Um, <coughs> but what we're doing now, and this is what I need, uh, and where is he? He's here. I'm going to put him on the spot. What we want to be able to do is to make that database better. And what I want to be able to do is for Orkin, no pressure, right? I want Orkin to come up with a, a system, a plugin, that will actually suck out all of our archived uh, uh, submission documents and put them straight into the database. Because if you develop that for us, it's also then available for everybody else within the system. So when they want to transfer, or if they want to transfer, that it makes it so much easier. Because by having what we have now in the Moodle assignment, it would make sure that we can uh, and we have the same concerns as Roger, I'm sure, as everybody else, it will make sure that the Moodle community would benefit and you're not driving stuff out to a third party all the time. Um, <coughs> and of course, the more of you guys that join, the more I'm going to haggle with him for a cheaper price. Okay, so thank you very much, folks. Just, uh, yeah, just a real comment, actually. The audio thing, um, we have Panopto, and Panopto has a plug-in for the HTML editor, so that's the same solution using a different tool, if that makes sense, but yeah, that's yeah. already available, or Poodle, or something else, yeah. but yeah, Brilliant. excellent work. I liked your view to kill, turn it in. You like my, hey, I'm <laughs> impressed, thanks very much. And it was the lady from Cranfield who works in the School of Defence, and she was on Her Majesty's Secret Service. That's who the competition is with, you know, <laughs> get that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is? Happy yeah, days? Well, it's yeah. Time.